Hi there, welcome to the continuation of tutorial 14. So now let's work in the case of the opposite DNA channel. So here you can download the cases. So the first things that I will do is just to show you the basic case setup, and then I'm just going to show you some final results. Okay, remember that these are time consuming simulations, so I'm not going to run everything. You already have there. So you load the cases. Okay, there you should have influent cases, for instance, DNA channel, see that you have different setups, runs or run less and DNAs. Remember following the, the, the workflow I'll show you before just to run SRS simulation is recommended to start from runs, then no runs, and then interpolate the solution. But in any case, you open any of these folders, see that you have final, that is the final solution that you have there, okay? So later for post-processing, I'm just going to open that. But to do this case setup, let me show you something. So here you have the basic physics. So see that here we're defining the Reynolds number based in the shear velocity, okay? We know how to compute this one. So this is our value. The, the, this is equivalent. The equivalent system Reynolds number is something about 20 times this, okay? So that is a kind of a correlation. It works well up to probably 1,000 of the Reynolds based in shear velocity. We set these physical properties, okay? And remember that we're going to set a pressure gradient to keep the flow moving, okay? And our final solution, shear stresses at the wall, the average should be about one Pascal, okay? So we're going to see this setup because it's a little bit particular because this is a validation case where we have periodic boundary conditions. This phase, this phase and the phase are periodic, but also this and this are periodic. It's not like previous cases that we have inlet outlets and then you set up here a velocity. No, here we have this periodicity, meaning that what is going on here is entering here and so on and so forth. So in this case, to keep the, the simulation, to, to push it, to, to push it to run, what we need to do is to impose a pressure gradient. So we're going to see, see how to set up the the boundary conditions, okay, using the text user interface and how to set up this pressure gradient, okay? So I, we're going to work, as I say, in a quartz mesh, but then also you, you will have there the, the workbench space just to set up any kind of mesh. So I will go and open my mesh, okay? So for the matters, okay, I will go, okay, let me see what do I have, and I will go and I think I will open the clean mesh. Okay, so I have access there. So I go mesh. And then mesh set settings and I will open the quartz mesh. So remember that there you're going to have also the workbench geometry mesh so you can do something else or something better. So here I'm opening the mesh. Okay, I read the everything. Okay. And this is what we have. Okay, you have all your physical walls. Okay, you have there is you come here, you see uh, you see all your patches or boundaries or faces. So the point is that we need to set boundary conditions, the periodic ones. You see here, you don't have access to those periodic boundary conditions here because the, the setup is a little bit particular, okay? So in theory, you, you could do something using mesh interface and whatever, but I prefer to do it in, in, the, in the graphical user interface, okay? In the text user interface. So see that when you are here, for instance, we want to make periodic this phase and this phase. So remember that those in my work setup is called front and back. So see this number, this ID number for us is important. Okay, so see that back ID eight, front ID seven. Okay, so let's go here. So to assign, to assign those period of the conditions using the text user interface, you go here, first define, and now see that you have boundary conditions there. You enter there. Okay, and now we need to access. So by the way, just feel free to explore all these options here. Okay, there are many options in the text user interface. I want to go modify sounds and see here that I have more options, but in particular, I'm interested in this one, make periodic. So I go there. So I don't need to type the whole, the, to type the, the whole name, just the first letter so I would recognize where I do the autocomplete. So see the periodic sound, I just need to select. So I want to make periodic eight and see it will ask you the shadow zone. Okay, the shadow, the one that, okay, should shadow that one. So it's also important that it's extremely recommended to have those faces, the same number of cells, okay, similar measures. Otherwise the treatment needs to be a slightly different. So my shadow the number is seven. It will ask me here, what kind of periodicity do you want? Rotational or translational? Okay, in our case, I will type no because I want 
translational and make periodic yes auto detect translation will auto detect the distance between the faces yes and that's all okay so if I go here and let me replot the mesh here so see that we have this and what I was mentioned about the, the, the cells, they need to be the same, okay? The same shape, same number of cells. They will be perfectly matched. They need to be perfectly matched. Or it's strongly recommended to have a strongly, a, a, a strong, a strongly recommended to have matching faces or cells. If you don't have that, the treatment is different. I'm not going to address that, but it should relate it to this mesh interface where you can set up that, that, that stuff. So, in our case, this is all. So we set up this periodicity and now let's set up the other periodi periodicity in outlet. Okay, so again, I go make periodic and this one will be in, will be five, out will be number six. No, yes, yes, and voila, it's done, okay. So if I replot here, now I have everything periodic. But what is interesting when you are creating the periodic phase, see that you, some phases here, some uh, zones are disappearing. They disappear because they are just put together in the periodic boundary conditions. Okay, so see that you have back that correspond to this and this, and in correspond to this and this. Okay, so these are your periodic conditions now. Remember that the rest are walls, okay? Top and bottom are walls, okay? So but to get this, to, keep, to, to, to get it started, we need to set up now a pressure gradient. So remember for the theory, we want a pressure gradient of uh, one Pascal, okay? Pascal meters here, mine. So this is the one that will keep the flow moving. So to do that, you go into periodic, Select the, the one you want, okay? Back or in it, I want this one. And see here that you have periodic conditions. And it's here where you can set that one. So you set it, you set that gradient in the direction you are interested. So I'm interested in this direction. I specify pressure gradient, see puzzle meters, put one, exactly as our word definition, okay? And that's all, okay? Press okay, and you are set. Okay, so now that you have this one, you can set up your case. Okay? You can run your case. You will set up your numerics in the usual way. Okay, everything is exactly the same. So this is just, I just wanted to address that. In the next videos, we're going to run the, the runs, then we're going to run the U runs, move to the less, interpolate, and then move to, to the DNS. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.